Hey guys, it's Belinda. I raised some concerns about shipping container buildings in a previous video, but today I'm going to be discussing five successful container conversions. First off, hydroponic vertical farms by Kimball Musk. Yes, that's Elon Musk's brother. He founded an urban farming company called Square Roots in Brooklyn, New York. Inside these shipping containers, plants grow vertically without soil and get their nutrition from water and light energy from powerful LEDs. They claim that a typical 40-foot or 300-square-foot shipping container can produce the same yield as a two-acre outdoor farm. Each vertical farm container uses only 8 gallons of water a day. Water is mixed with nutrients, drips down the vertical planters and is then collected at the bottom of the planter in trays to be recirculated. Because of the system, the container farm uses 95% less water than an outdoor farm. Red and blue light are the most effective for plant growth, so the LED strips provide that specific spectrum of light. The result is a system that operates independently from land, climate and season with the power to bring local food production directly to people, no matter where they are in the world. With global population increasing rapidly, we have to invent new ways to improve food production. In addition to providing people with fresh food, vertical farms hope to reduce gas emissions because delivery trucks won't have to travel thousands of miles carrying the produce. There's some debate about whether these shipping container farms are as productive as they claim to be and whether the energy costs to run them are justified, but I'm looking at it purely from a standpoint of repurposing a shipping container. Kimball Musk wasn't the first person to convert a shipping container for this purpose. Brad McNamara and John Friedman started their company Freight Farms in 2013 and were one of the first to coin the term ag tech for agriculture technology. They created a hydroponic shipping container farm called The Greenery in Boston, Massachusetts. The Greenery has an installation of R28 so it can maintain an inside temperature of 70 degrees Fahrenheit while the outside temperature can be minus 40 degrees Fahrenheit to 130 degrees Fahrenheit. They used a typical refrigerated shipping container or reefer, removed the refrigeration gear that came with it and installed a much more advanced HVAC system. Their website has a 3D greenery tour that allows you to see the inside of one of their container farms. You can see that the original walls have remained intact and the structure of the container wasn't compromised in any way. They did not make any exterior modifications, did not cut the walls of the container and did not replace the existing installation. All the refurbishments were made inside the container. The second example is Bitcoin mining shipping containers. A company based in Latvia called Power Mining is converting 20-foot containers into cryptocurrency mining hubs that can hold 165 miners. The hot and cold zones are separated so they do not need industrial fans. Their containers have two large openings on the side for ventilation, which isn't ideal since it compromises the structure of the container, but it's unavoidable because of the amount of heat generated from crypto mining machines. Other than the cutouts, there aren't any drastic changes made to the container. There are no furred out walls and no hidden electric work. The interior layout is very simple and functional and makes good use of the container. The company says that it can be transported anywhere in the world where electricity is cheap to continue operation. Many small-scale Bitcoin miners have jumped on this idea and built similar units in their backyards. With container homes, your local building code can require you to purchase only new or one-time use containers. However, for a Bitcoin mining purpose, you have the advantage of purchasing older and cheaper containers that aren't in the best shape. These miners are very loud, so housing them in a shipping container further away from your home is a great idea. As most of you probably know, Bitcoin mining is the process of solving complex equations to make new units of virtual currency and earn transaction fees. It is so electricity intensive that most of it is done in remote chilly areas with cheap power such as northwestern China. However, since 2017, the US and Canada have ramped up Bitcoin mining operations. I found a very interesting Wall Street Journal article on Black Pearl Resources Incorporated in Alberta, Canada. It's an oil extraction company that is stepping into the world of Bitcoin mining. The reason is that whenever they pull oil from the ground, they also extract natural gas, which presents a problem. It's not economically viable to ship the natural gas to other companies to refine it 
because they are in such a remote location and they cannot release all that natural gas into the atmosphere since they have to comply with strict environmental regulations. So they capture this excess fuel, link it up to gas electric generators, convert it into electricity and then use that electricity to power Bitcoin mining shipping containers. An oil company turning into a Bitcoin entrepreneur is an unlikely marriage, but it works in this case because they're using a byproduct and they're not paying for electricity. The third shipping container conversion is something unusual that I hadn't heard of until I was doing research for this video. It's a fire training facility and burn building for firefighters. A series of containers are linked together to create a maze with doors and hallways. Wood pallets are set on fire inside, allowing firefighters to practice a variety of realistic scenarios. These container conversions put firefighters in an environment that they can control, that they can predict, and that can be recreated over and over again, which helps them be more proficient at their job. It also allows them to learn the science of how fire behaves, develops, and spreads. Companies such as this one sell structures that can be designed for Class A fires, which are from flammable materials like wood, fabric, and paper, or liquefied petroleum gas, or LPG fires. Their converted shipping container setups are either mobile or stationary, and single-story or multiple stories. They make minimal changes to the container itself, but the inside of the containers are customized with tack-welded sheet metal to simulate walls, create rooms, and hallways. The metal walls can be moved around easily to create different mazes and training exercises for the firefighters. This is an excellent way of repurposing a shipping container because Corton steel can withstand repeated training exercises with live flames. You can easily add containers to this maze to make it more advanced. You don't have to worry about insulation or plumbing or electrical work. The container is treated as raw material. The fourth conversion is by Ben Paik, the owner of Wobby Design. He converted a 20-foot shipping container into his wood shop. His conversion was extremely simple. He used 2x4 wood studs, XPS insulation and drywall to finish out the inside of the container. He made a single cut into the container for a fan to ventilate the inside of the unit. He claims that the insulation helps keep the container cooler in summer. It might make a minor difference, but when you make such a large opening in the exterior wall, the R value of your wall system drops drastically especially when it's an opening for a fan and not a window. He did not run plumbing or electrical wiring inside the wall, so he could build them at a minimal thickness. The reason I say this is a successful conversion is because the container wood shop is never fully enclosed. Because of that cutout that he made for the fan, air is constantly flowing through the unit, which minimizes or eliminates the high temperature difference between the inside and the outside. It nullifies the thermal bridging of the wood studs and therefore reduces the potential for condensation inside his walls. There's an impressive number of tools and woodworking equipment inside the container, but it's a very functional space. He upcycles old skateboards and creates sleek and sexy products. You should go check out his channel, I'll link it in the description below. Of course, he's not the only one who has converted a shipping container into a wood shop. There are other people who have as well. And I think it's a really good idea. Lastly, I'm going to throw in shipping container homes for you guys so you don't chew me up in the comments. Containing Luxury is a two-man team who creates simple but well-constructed container homes. And they produce videos explaining their conversion process on YouTube. There are three reasons why I support this channel over other container home channels. First off, their conversions are very simple. They seem to constrain them to single 40-foot shipping containers with minimal cuts for windows and doors. They are very transparent about their budget and the construction difficulties they face during their container home conversions. And most importantly, they understand building construction science. They are advocates for exterior insulation for container homes and they stress the importance of rain screen siding. All right, those are the five shipping container conversions I wanted to share with you guys. I considered adding shipping container lap pools and underground bunkers, but I realized that the walls are just made of 3 16th inch sheet metal and cannot support the outward force of water or the downward force of earth, and you'd require additional reinforcement. 
so they are not the best for those two purposes. Anyway, don't forget to like this video and subscribe to my channel. Until next time, I'm Belinda. Thanks for watching.